Peripheral artery disease is when blood vessels constrict blood flow into the limbs. Constriction occurs when arteries have plaques building up inside them. This decreases the amount of blood flow to tissues and muscles. It's a serious condition and can be a sign of something worse. This is because if there's disease in the blood vessels around the legs, this is likely going to be the case in the blood vessels around the heart. If peripheral artery disease is left untreated, it can lead to tissue damage and full-blown cardiovascular disease. The symptoms of it include decrease in the amount of hair that's growing on the lower part of your legs, discoloured or cold feet, painful legs, or legs getting tired easily when walking. Advanced symptoms are sores or ulcers on your feet and cuts not healing easily. Medical advice has often been to avoid saturated fats and high cholesterol foods. But are these truly the cause of clogged arteries? What really causes this condition and what steps can we take to avoid it? Some experts argue that the things we've been told lead to clogged arteries such as saturated fats and foods high in cholesterol are not the true cause. They believe inflammation is at the heart of the matter. This is because it leads to arteries becoming damaged which then results in plaques forming and narrowing of the vessels. Basically, a lesion occurs in the arterial muscle which is caused by inflammation. When this happens, cholesterol comes along to heal the lesion. It acts as a band-aid along with calcium and fibrin to heal wounds that occur on the arterial wall. Interestingly, your body makes 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol per day and it's involved in creating sex hormones, keeping the brain functioning optimally, absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, bile acid production for digestion, cell and nerve regeneration. As you can see, cholesterol does numerous important jobs. So if the body makes cholesterol to heal damage from inflammation on arterial walls, we need to understand how to avoid this happening. But how do we do this? An increasing amount of research is emerging which indicates that the key for healthy arteries is to prevent chronic inflammation. Therefore, it's important to identify what could be the cause of chronic inflammation. The causes vary from environmental toxins to inflammatory foods, to mental and emotional stresses, lack of nutrients, and insulin levels that are continually too high. Insulin spikes when we consume foods that are high in carbohydrates, and especially sugars. This then leads to elevated blood glucose. The average American consumes 149 pounds of sugar each year, and that's not to mention the refined flours, which also cause high blood sugar. This could explain why we have such an epidemic of cardiovascular issues. So let's discover how to lower insulin and reduce inflammation. But before we do that, if you haven't already, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We've got amazing new content each week. And if you want to learn more about reducing your risk of a peripheral artery disease, then why not download our free ebook, The Surprising Truth About Fat and Cholesterol. Plus, get exclusive insights from some of the world's leading medical and nutritional professionals by watching the first episode of the untold story of heart disease. Both gifts can be grabbed simply by clicking the link in the description below. So go and claim them for free now. Most people associate high insulin levels with diabetes. However, high levels of insulin can also play a huge role in the development of cardiovascular disease. Although high insulin is often associated with a diet high in sugar, it's also important to note that it can be linked to stress. This is because when your body is in a high stress state, it elevates blood sugar levels. The reason for this is that in the past, the stressful situations we faced would have been ones such as running away from wild animals, fighting off an attacker. These require us to have instant energy, hence why our body is intelligently made to provide us with this energy. However, in the modern world, the stress we face doesn't often require the same instant energy expenditure. But our body still raises blood sugar and then insulin to deal with the excess sugar. Therefore, reducing stress levels can be an integral part of lowering insulin. Another thing to consider is processed grains. These can have the same effect as eating foods high in refined sugars. 
These range from whole wheat bread, pasta, pastries, cereals, etc. Avoiding these foods can help keep blood sugar levels in a healthy range and thus lower insulin. This can also reduce inflammation and may help prevent arterial plaque. When we avoid processed foods and sugars, it's important to ensure our diet is full of nutrients that will help us feel sustained, have less cravings, and feel fuller for longer. This leads me to another important step, and that is eat fibre-rich foods. Fibre can help improve the function of the blood vessel walls. It encourages the body to get rid of excess sodium via urination, plus it improves insulin sensitivity. Furthermore, it decreases the activity of the sympathetic nervous system, which can raise blood pressure. Having healthy blood pressure levels will help to keep arteries in good shape and avoid plaque formation. A 1999 study found that individuals decreased systolic blood pressure by 7.5 to 9.4 millimetres of mercury and diastolic by 5.5 millimetres of mercury when given different forms of fibre, either from oat bran or glucaminin. Glucaminin is found in konjac noodles and can also help improve gut health. Having a healthy gut enables the body to absorb vitamins and minerals optimally, thus enabling our body to maintain health. Other fibre-rich foods such as fruits and vegetables also contain vital nutrients and antioxidants that work to help protect our cells from damage and chronic inflammation. A great way to ensure you're getting plenty of essential vitamins and minerals is to eat the rainbow. So ensure you eat a variety of different coloured foods. For example, carrots and pumpkins, plenty of leafy greens, blueberries, strawberries, aubergine and red cabbage. Being healthy doesn't have to be boring, so get creative with your food and see how many different colours you can eat in a day. So there you have it the true cause of peripheral artery disease and how to prevent it. Let our community know in the comments below if you have any great ideas on how to eat the rainbow. And before you leave, make sure to claim your free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to our Heart Disease Code channel and hit that bell button for more help managing your blood health. Thanks for watching. Have a heart healthy day.